Okay, and Julia, and what's your fit, forfeit you want for them? Because I, I'm not 100% sure we, we could do something here. I mean, yeah, I, it's an interesting one to think. I think Riddle should simply just dance, just the most embarrassing dance? dance that he can think I've of. I know that's dance. quite an I've easy seen one. Him dance. He's a good dancer, mate. Oh, right, okay, so that's not going to work then. Ton, what do you think he should do? Because he's he going to lose. I think dancing could be good because I think he's going to lose too because I think Epsilon are going to walk away with this one. We were yeah. talking about it just there before. I think 3 1. I agree with you. Yeah. That's what you said. I just think that Vitality will take an S&D, but I think Epsilon is just going to be too strong in the, uh, the run and gun game modes. You know, I think Epsilon coming at this online, you looked at them, you just thought, unstoppable. They beat TCM a couple of times. I know those two went up against each other, not necessarily in the qualifiers, obviously, but uh, in sort of 2K, that sort of thing. I think they've just looked so, so strong. TCM, for me, are better than Vitality. Yeah. And I think that Epsilon have the very slightest of edge over TCM, but I think if TCM turn up, I just don't really know what's going to happen. No. I, can't, I can't predict the final. No, I cannot predict the final either. And that is what's so good about the Call of Duty European Championships is that even us as casters mm. and the guys backstage are really struggling to call this one. We've had people calling things one minute and then suddenly the opposite happening. Really interesting to yeah. see how the game is going to be going. But of course, guys, if you are just joining us, we've got Epsilon going up against Vitality Rises, eight of the best players. We've got Tommy, otherwise known as the Game Changer, Jerd, also known as King Jerd, Flux, Swanee in there as well. And then for Vitality Rises, the French squad, we've got Kataga, Broken, Carnage, and Blue in there as well. I think it's really going to be who shows up on the day. Still do agree with you there that yep. Epsilon could take it. According to Jerd and Flux, their worst game type or the one that they're not keen on as much is Blitz. So I think that could maybe slightly go in favor of the Vitality guys if they get that run and game, gun and game going themselves, I but think still. It, I think it very much depends on how... Diablo plays and yeah. how Gatago plays. I think if Gatago plays as well as he can and Diablo plays as well as he has been and the other two guys chip in, I think Carnage had a bad half of domination in the previous game, but that was about it. Yeah. Um, I think if they play well, they can definitely bring the game, but they have to play well. They can't just go in there and not make the plays. Gatago needs to make the clutch and plays that he usually does, force them in there, get the slayers down. Epsilon... If they just sort of show up in 90%, I think they can do it. Yeah, I mean, you it's going to be a really interesting game. And of course, one that's really actually been impressing me so far for Vitality throughout the tournament has been Broken. He's gone off time and time again. I do remember casting over him earlier today and he dropped 13 kills. It's very rare to see him have a bad game. It's very, yeah. very rare. You know, he's one of these players that will consistently put out the numbers. You know, it's not one necessarily one of these guys who will constantly top the leaderboard, but he's always in there. And, Thereabouts, yeah. you know, he's one of these guys who will put up the numbers when need be and pretty consistently. So we, we'll expect that performance from him. But I think that Epsilon, I think they just have too much in their pockets, you know, for for Vitality. I mean, the doors are nearly about to get closed here, so we should be starting up. I'm going to join the game. It is going to be Octane Domination. We're going to be going straight into predictions for the map. Okay, I think that Epsilon are going to be able to take this one as long as they get a good start on it, if they get that initial break, which we talk about time and time again yeah. being so crucial. But let's actually have a look at the results so far, which these teams have taken so far in the tournaments yesterday and today as well. Of course, Epsilon have actually only played one match so far, and it was very late last night. Um, they were talking about it before. I think that might play a little bit in the favour, because I think Epsilon on will obviously sorry in the favor of Vitality. I think yeah. Epsilon obviously are gonna have to get a bit warmed up here. Obviously they would have been playing mm -hmm. on the side stage. Obviously we have a warm up stage there for players to sort of just get a feel for the game a bit more. Obviously it does help the warm up. Um I think that's gonna be a little bit of a factor of Vitality a bit more prepared than that, but I think it'll take a couple of minutes for Epsilon to really get going. Yep, well we will see what happens. Okay, just joining the game now. Getting into spectator mode for you guys of course the results of Vitality rises. They took their game yesterday against Infamous Theory 3-0. Their domination game was on point in that game. 166 point difference. Yep. I believe the biggest we have seen all weekend for them. Then heading into today's results, they did beat Orbit 3-1 and I believe they did also beat All Stars 3-1 as well to head through to the semi-final stages. But here we go. We are on board with the game ton. Let's explain what happens in Domination just to give everybody at home an even level pegging here. Okay, so there's three points on the map. You capture those points by having players on there. The more players you have on there, the quicker that you actually capture the points. I'm just trying to work out who to or is. That's going to be Jared. Then. Um, the quicker you get players on that point, the quicker you capture that point. If you capture that point, every point you have counts, uh, counts towards one point per five seconds. Of course, you have two points in the enemy has one point. Then you're getting a one point difference every five seconds. The team with the most points at the end of both halves win the game. Oh, this is a brilliant wow. start by Tommy. Look at that. That's the skill that this Epsilon team have. I just think their shots are ridiculous. This guy Flux as well, one of the best objectives on the game. B is still currently contested between both teams. But Epsilon, the ones that are going in with the better start, they did actually get the home flag of 
Vitality, so that's a big, big start for Epsilon. And there you go, Flux coming in there with a brilliant kill. And the Vector is something I've seen used a little bit more so far at the beginning, coming on to the end of the tournament, yeah. sorry. You know, I think at the beginning, everyone was just Mtar and Remington. But maybe people have started to sort of think about the Xbox One. Maybe something changes a little bit. That uh, Vector working very well this weekend. Indeed, it does so. Instead of this, isn't actually Giants to haul on your screen. This is Jerd. Unfortunately, I think his game attack may have not been able to work. So he is under this game attack. But of course, we know King Jerd will be able to spot his playing style from an absolute mile away as he is able to pick up another kill there onto Blue. They've managed to lock down C and B. So once again, they've actually traded the home flags to 28 to 8. Already. And just look at that score. Exactly what you would expect from Epsilon now. We were debating whether they were going to be able to to get this good start. I called that Epsilon would take the map if they got the good start, exactly what they wanted to do. Oh, oh look at that knife coming in there. That's three momentarily down for Vitality. Broken, the last one left alive. Not the best of starts here for Rise's turn. Yeah, not the best start at all. This is not where they wanted. Blue's currently top of the leaderboard for them, but he's going one in six. Everyone on Epsilon is positive. And it's just really showing Church shot just does not come off. He did actually get the assist there. And on board with Swanee now in the middle of the map. And obviously one of the veterans of the Call of Duty team. Managed to steal out. Now he picked up a nice two-piece there. Going on board with Flux. And actually, let's go on board with the Vitality, guys. See what they can do. Get back into this, because currently they're 30 points down. It's not even halfway gone. Not a great start for them. Trying to get a hold of B, though. Oh, We're on board with Broken. Carnage just actually got a huge three-piece. Unfortunately, does get taken out by his own teammate. That was Broken who took him out there. But they have been able to get B. Unfortunately, does get taken out as well. So that is two down, as we see Blue managing to get a kill there onto Flux. But have a look at this. This B flag just being traded. Of course, whoever is able to hold down the most amount of flags for the longest amount of time will be able to get that increase in score and be able to take the first half the way that domination works. If you aren't aware, is that we switched oh sides at the five-minute mark to make sure that everybody gets an even level pegging on the spawns, spawning at one side of the map on each half. Let's see what Flux does here. Unfortunately, does get taken out. Once again, three down for Epsilon. Rises, they're starting to He's warm up. He's not going to hit that grenade, is he? Tommy, no. no. Oh, yes, he, he did. put it in wow. there as well. That's an amazing grenade by Tommy. They do actually get B there anyway. We're going to jump on board with Swan. He was obviously going to go up top here. This is the sort of position that he does like to take up. Remington in hand. And one of the best shots on the game, Swanee. Yeah, he is indeed a very, very, very scary opponent to come up against. Of course, Swanee, one of the best known as you do say tons. So here we go. Still on top of this position. Just going to see if anybody's going to be challenging him. They actually are losing C at the second, which means that Rises are going to be going for the triple cap. Although they have been able to take control of B, it looks like at the second Epsilon, that is, of course, Swanee taking off a player towards A as well. So B has been neutralized. Vitality getting the points advantage in this stage, starting to bring back that deficit. But have a look at the clock turn. One minute, 19 seconds, 61 to 40. Still in favor of Epsilon. It's looking pretty good for Epsilon at the moment. They need to get hold of B. That neutralized will do them just right. They're not losing any points out. They're just sticking at the lead that they currently have. And that's a good shot by Swanee. He'll set their old DB. does get taken down. Let's go on board with Flux now. Of course, he prefers the SMG. So this isn't exactly his favorite map, I would say. And I'll have to ask him myself, actually. But on board with Flux Vector in hand. Shot's going to go down. He should make this kill. Lots of shots. Oh, Knife comes in. Unlucky. That's four down momentarily. So there you go. Vitality should get a hold of B now. A little bit slower to get on that. Is anybody from Epsilon going to be able to stop it? And they may get three capped here. They may actually get... Yeah, they're getting the spawn inside of Strip Club. And this is where it's going to be a problem. Because now Vitality are really going to catch up quickly if they're not careful. Yep, indeed. So having a look at that scoreboard once again, 30 seconds left before we do end the first half. Again, as I do say, we will have another five minutes on this map to really determine the winner. Epsilon still with that very slim lead, although Vitality are really coming back into this. And it was about 30-point lead that they had earlier on turn, but yeah. Rises, they've woken up, they've come into the game, starting to get used to the playstyle, it seems. You do see Blue, the man on your screen. He's going to be able to neutralize that A point, and he is going to be able to take it as well by the looks of things. Seven seconds left on the clock. 73 to 67 is the score. A lot closer than we may have first predicted in it, turn, but this has been a very good half of Call of Duty. In the end, it's going to be only six points between them. And there's the Epsilon team. I really like those new jerseys, by the way. Oh, they look so good, don't I'm they? They fan. look so professional. I'm a big fan. But yeah, it, you know, they, they, I don't think they'll be too happy with that, considering the lead that they did actually have. They've got to be a bit disappointed of how they did catch up. I mean, going in there with a six-point lead is nothing. No, indeed. And, and that's the thing. The Rises are obviously going to be using to their advantage, though. Although, technically, they have a deficit. Oh, well, they, they are just they, going they to use that. Deficit. Yeah, I mean, they do now have to use that as motivation coming into the second half. That's yeah, all yeah. they can really do with it. You've got to think of momentum throughout the half there. Epson, fantastic start. They were 30 points up, but then halfway through the first half. Vitality really, really closed that down. And something I talk about, I'm just looking at the scoreboard here. Carnage had a good game. Guitarga had a good game. 
Diablo, not necessarily a mass massive amount of kills, but five captures for him. Broken, consistent as ever. May have only one negative one, but still pretty steady game. Flux needs to step up with this game, as I said. Maybe not his most favorite map with his play style, but the rest of the team on Epsilon really doing work there. Five captures for to her, obviously, who is Jade on that game attack. But yeah, going the second half here, I think... You know, I, th I think Epsilon will take... I think they'll have another good start, which is what they need, but I think Epsilon will be predicted a little bit by Vitality because what they did is they ran around to the other home flag and did work there, which really stopped, you know, Vitality getting any points on the board early on. Within a minute, they were 10 points already, Epsilon. Yeah. So let's see what's going to happen. We're going to go in the second half, Epsilon taking on Vitality. Indeed. So, of course, this is going to be such a close game. And if that first half is going to be an indicator to what the entire series is like, you guys at home here, everybody here in the venue is certainly in for a treat, of course, here at the Call of Duty European Championships. We are in this first semi-final stages, having a very quick look just while the map loads up at the, uh, the map list, which we've got here. So we're starting off on Octane, obviously. We'll be heading to Search and Destroy, Warhawk Neck, then onto Blitz Freight, my favorite map and game mode, actually. Then heading over to Domination Sovereign and finally Search and Destroy Octane. But of course, that is if we do go to the final map where we be playing that S&D on Octane. But anyway, back here onto Domination Octane. We're going to jump on board with the French squad. We've got the French monster on your screen. It's Kataga. Yeah, I want to see how he starts this one off. He's going to be very aggressive, I would imagine. And there you go. Vote for your favorite team, guys. I'd imagine that's probably going to go in favor of Vitaly with the, with the French community. Obviously, a brilliant community within the European season. But here we go. Flux coming in. He's changed it up a little bit. That shotgun's going to cause a lot of problems. Oh, the great position blue. gets turned on by Jude. And once again, a fantastic start by Epsilon. Let's see what they can do on this C flag. Nobody contesting B. And, you know, Epsilon aren't going to really be bothered about that. They're going in for the home flag of Vitality. And they're absolutely all over it. Jude eventually going to get taken out. Swanee. Picking up a position in apartments yet. Just looking over people. I'm going to go stay on board with Vitality. Kitaga managed to pick up his first kill of the game. Yep, indeed. So having a look at the screen there, you can see that A is in control from Epsilon at the second. Vitality have control of C. And now we do see that Kitaga is starting to make a move onto B. Did take some shots, but I believe his teammate helped out. And that is three down there for Epsilon. Flux, the last one left alive momentarily, which means that if oh. Vitality can get control of this, they will be able to get that de six point deficit, sorry, brought back into it and it looks like that Tommy and Flux are going to be moving in here that There's all important trophy system on. coming down three members on they're going to get that but very very quickly Epsilon great one yeah just really shifting the momentum in their favor again and that's the main thing you need to get the players on there if you have them around there you know jump on it it just works for your team better and now they're going for C as well there's two of them up there shots going to go down Flux is going to pick up one is he going to pick up a second not quite has support from his teammate which was actually Jared does get taken out by Broken and they're really pushing in here you know they know then lead isn't big enough to sort of just rest on it. They really need to go out and play an aggressive game currently in the lead by five points and six points from the previous, so 11 points in total. Yeah, and of course, Tommy, the man who just died, he was on your screen. Flux, actually, moving to Epsilon relatively recently, of course. He was on another roster, which I believe was TCM, for almost two grenade. and a half years. He does get the grenade through there. Unfortunately, he isn't able to connect with it, but this is his first roster change in quite a while. Obviously fitting into the squad incredibly well, always showing his worth for how much oh, of a strong player he is. Broken, the man that I said to really watch out for from this Ryzer squad, showing how great he is with that Remington R5. He's going to pick up that MTAR as well. Still, that B flag is actually neutralized. Having a look at the score, though, Ton, 2 minutes 48 seconds left. 35 to 25, still in favor of Epsilon. Yeah, Epsilon looking pretty good for their win here. Now, Broken's not in a great position to be in. He's going to take out one. He's going to look for the second to the right-hand side. He pulls up a great two piece. That's great work by Broken to get on top of Flux. Flux coming up bad, though. Good work by him. Good control of this left-hand side. B currently neutralized, though. Who's going to get a hold of it? It's going to be Jared in there with the two piece. He should pick up this point. There you go, B. Picked up by Jed. I'm going to go back on board with Brogan and see what he can do because he really needs his team to help him out here. Currently going 10 and 2 with two captures. His team needs to step it up and he's making every single shot he needs to. And he's going to try and push in there for A as they are currently losing C but taking B. And they're taking B and C now. So there you go. Taking Let's see what they can do. If they can get a three cap, even for a few seconds, it will really help them out. And Epsilon are nowhere at the minute. They're going to get a hold of there. You go three captures 
for, episode, uh, for Vitality, sorry, as they all seem to go down. Brogan's last man alive, they're probably going to lose B. Yeah, indeed. And the way that I know that Vitality and most other pro teams as well like to play this is if they can lock down the areas on the map and even lock down A here when they're spawning originally from the C area, they really like to lock down that spawn and make sure that the other team cannot get out of strip club. That's their real preferred situation. That's where they want to be, making sure that they've got all three flags giving them points, but it just didn't seem to work that way. Epsilon broke out of there just instantly. You've got to really admire what Broken is doing now. Currently on a six streak at the moment. That does include a capture, though. Very, very well played to him. He's going to try and get a hold of B. He's going to need a good shot to hold off. It was actually Jade in the end. They get to hold of B, though. You know what? Vitality coming back into this, currently only seven points down in this half. They need to do some work though. I think if they hold this down though, they probably will take the lead. They'll be very close if oh, they hold this. 10. Yeah. Wow. We hear the crowd actually starting yeah. to react to the way that Broken is working right now. 17 and 2. 10 streak for this man, unfortunately, does get taken down 17 there. 17 and but 3. That, that could have been a complete game changer there. And I told you that he was the guy to really watch out for. He was probably going to be the guy to really put the Vitality squad up. Is it going to be the crucial factor? Katarga's going to get this as well. Katarga's going to get this, and it's currently drawn. Only a six point lead with 40 seconds to go. Epsilon need to do something here. I'm going to go on board with Blue from Vitality as they do actually tend to lose. Yeah, they've managed to lose there, but he's going to try and get back onto it. Nobody currently cash in B. That's not going to suit Vitality at all. They need oh, to get this flag. That's a big They're losing B as well. That's good work by Vitality. Epsilon, sorry. All of them go down. Epsilon gain control. Once again, the map is going to go to Epsilon. Wow, this was such a close game of domination. All the way of down the past 30 yeah, seconds. Exactly, you know? and that's exactly what we want to see here. The guy's just cleaning up a couple of last second kills there. Six seconds left on the clock, but having a look at the score, all even here, just about as Epsilon do reach gain the lead once again in the last few seconds but that first round lead was actually one of the crucial things one point the difference in the second half six points the difference in the first half of course easily totaling them up epsilon win the first game of domination on octane by a single seven points yeah that was one really within just before the final 30 seconds there but you've got to feel for broken putting up that sort of game and his team not coming away with it he's going to be disappointed 18 and 7 he played fantastically well there mm. but he's going to take that in the next game thought you know, I've had a good game there. Let's see if we can take it in the second map, which we're going to see after this very, very quick commercial break.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the first semi-final match of the European Championships. Epsilon managing to take the first map against Vitality Rises. We're just going to bring you some quick shots of actually the players in their booths so you can see who is bringing you all of this great Call of Duty action today. Let's have a look. This is Jerd, King Jerd, as he is better known, one of the best players in the European scene, known worldwide just for his aggressive play style and how well he does. Let's have a look and see who is next into him in the booth. That actually looks like it could be Flux, who is next to him, moving over. Yes, that is Flux indeed. Of course, making that roster move relatively recently from TCM. He was on that squad for a number of years, but seems to have fitted in so well to this Epsilon roster. Let's move across and see who is next to him. Of course, that is going to be Swanee. Great guy, doing very, very well indeed in this game and throughout the whole series. One of those names who you always know. And onto the last player, which is actually going to be Tommy, of course, the game changer. One of my favorite players in the scene and in the game as a whole. Let's switch over and see what the Vitality Rises are going. We'll go through the Vitality squad after this game. I'm yep. sure you'll all know who they are, though, but we're going to be watching Search and Destroy on Walk. Yeah, there's so much to talk about with all of these players that it's so difficult just to go through them very, very swiftly. So we're just going to be bringing you straight into the game instead, and we will talk about that Rises squad after this game ends instead. So here we go, Search and Destroy on Warhawk. I haven't actually seen this one in a while. I do believe I casted it over very quickly yesterday, but Epsilon are going to be your attacking team. Now, turn again. We explained what happened in Domination and the game rules for that. Let's explain Search and Destroy. Search and Destroy, two targets to attack. You have to pick up the bomb, plant the bomb, and there's a 45 second timer once you <laughs> look at that. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, the favorite team is definitely uh, Vitality. Uh, anyway, as I was explaining, uh, obviously you have to plant the bomb on one of the targets. The favorite one tends to be B on this one. Once you get the bomb down, there is 45 seconds on that clock. If you can hold out and that bomb explodes, you win the round. The defending team must stop the enemy team getting that bomb down, or if both teams wipe out each other. So if you take out all four members of the enemy team, you win the round. Also, it's first to six rounds. The first kill did go to Tommy. I was going to go on board with him, but I thought I want, I want to give Flux some camera time, you know, and something that he may be a bit sort of better at. You know, the first yeah. first map, he didn't have the best of times, but, you know, he's still a very accomplished player. And we somebody, know somebody who can really go off when he needs to. Yep, indeed. This is his favorite game mode, according to what we've got. And actually, Carnage is the last one left alive. We'll see what work he can do. Let's switch over to him. And a one versus four situation. He's got that Remington. And there is actually going to be a player right next to him on the bomb plant. He is going to spot him. Gets the headshot onto Jerd. Oh. Knows that there's another player just to his left. Not going to work, though. Very, very horrible situation for Carnage. Lovely start here for Epsilon. They started very strong in the domination. They've done exactly the same. Repeated that in the search and destroy. Yeah, well, Flux coming up. Trump's there. That's going to be one kill a piece for every single one of the Epsilon team members. And Carnage really couldn't do anything there. You know, he's seen what he tried to do. If you are taking down that second player, I think he probably was <laughs> getting taken down. We'll stay on board with Carnage, actually. Let's see what he can do at the start of this game. And this is all about getting your grenades off at the beginning as well. Now, that's an interesting match. I'm going to go on board with Kutaga. He's not going to pick up anybody up there, but Blue is getting in there very, very quickly. He's going to spot somebody to the right. Is he going to get two of them? Oh, oh Blue started Blue. very, very well. Taken out by his team here. Very unfortunate. Broken. Not helping out his team very much. Headshot into Blue, taking him down. So now three versus two in favor of Vitality. How Carnage. did he get that shot? What's he going on there for? I mean, Carnage, fantastic shot. Eventually taken him out. Tommy did take down Broken with that grenade. The last guy on the Epsilon team is going to be Tommy, formerly of Vitality. Yeah, indeed. He's teamed with a lot of French teams quite recently, then moving over to Epsilon, full English squad there. So we will see if he's going to be able to pick up this one versus two clutch against Carnage and Gotaga. He spotted one player there. Now it's a one versus one. Is he going to get a second? Ooh. No, Gotaga shut him down with the MTAR there. That was very, very close. If Tommy had got that one, that really would have given them an even further momentum boost. You see, this, this is a good reason to stick together yes, within indeed. SNT. You know, if he wasn't there anywhere near it, Tommy could have run off. And Gotaga was in the better position to get the kill there, of course, because he, he knows where he is and he can react quicker if he's already concentrated on the other team up. So it's very important to stick together. Obviously not too close to him. They're standing right next to each other with their backs turned to Tommy. He would have picked up the two-piece very easily, but that's one of my golden rules for s and We're sticking it on board with Tommy now. Three and one current. Yep, he is indeed. Both attacking teams so far have been able to successfully win the rounds, and Tommy Aww. gets the initial pick there onto Broken. Broken still without a kill. He dropped 13 kills earlier on on the Search and Destroy that I casted over. He's not got a kill so far, and he's got three deaths to his name, so not a good start for him. Tommy with four kills. He's just making sure that nobody's going to be pushing over from American and over towards the A bomb site, but the bomb is actually going to be going down. That's Jerd getting one, although it's all evened up. Flux does go down. Shots going down over towards the B bomb site. Let's see what happens. This one is in a great position. Shots going to go 
down. Carnage going to take him out. The great shot answering back, though. And Jed is not going to miss that one on the head glitch. He has a couple of players run at him. Oh, Does get target. taken down. Tommy, though, in a fantastic position to do something here. Yep, he is indeed. He's going to oh, try and he's have gonna a look. Oh, he's going to get caught. Oh, oh, yes. <gasps> the players missed the shot completely. Tommy's in a great position. They know exactly where he is. Is the knife going to come in? It was Guitarga missing those shots. And oh, Tommy, there, there the we go. Piece. There you go. That's going to be the round two Epsilon. Six and one. Guitarga should be making that shot for me. I mean, Ran in there a little bit. You know, I was speaking to Tommy before this game, and he says, I know what these guys are going to do. They're going to challenge me at every single opportunity they get, which, in my opinion, is a mistake to make against Tommy. I mean, that should have been all over for Tommy there. In a one versus two situation, he was left in that in the previous round. He wasn't quite able to clutch it. Gataga actually taking him out successfully. But in the second calling, Tommy able to get the one versus two clutch. Lovely work from him. Gataga is the man on your screen. Let's see if he's got any better accuracy with this sniper rifle to his hands. He's played very well with it so far throughout the tournament. He's also got the MTAR as his secondary. Of course, as you can see at the top, 2-1 lead here for Epsilon heading into the fourth round. Carnage is taking shots. He's going to back away and broken again, unsuccessfully picking up any kills. He's Norton 4 and Flux has also gone down. Yeah, Blue making up a kill there. He's very advanced forward, so that's going to cause some problems for Epsilon. Oh, I think that's Swanee to the right-hand side there. No, I was wrong, actually. It looks like it's going to be Jed. So... You know, they're around the bomb site. It does look like it's going to be going down, actually. Yeah, Carnage does get the bomb down. Three versus three now with the bomb down. So, if anything, the advantage is in Vitality's hands if they can hold this down. As Gataga does take down Jerd. Let's see what Swanee can do. Currently one and two, he'll want to step his game up. Yep, he will indeed, of course, Swanee. One of those players who can easily do that. And he is going to find a player there. Unfortunately, not going to happen in this round as he's one and three. Tommy, again, left all alone. He's picked up his seventh kill of the game. He's on a four streak at the second, but he's got 19 seconds to try and get two more players and defuse the bomb as well. He spotted one. Going to put a few shots down so they know where he is. Gets one kill. Is he going to get the second? Ten, um, ten uh, rounds of ammunition, sorry, left in his gun. He's going to back away from that. Not enough time to defuse the bomb, unfortunately. Yeah, so, you know, Blue did the right thing, though. He didn't get his, all of his shots off. He does eventually get the kill there yeah. anyway. He didn't get all of his shots off, but he thought, instead of letting him turn on his, I'm just going to run away here yeah. because at the end of the day, the time is ticking down. There wasn't enough time for Tommy to do anything. He does eventually pick up the kill in the end there. Tommy did very well to stay alive, though. And Vitaly, I know that Blue got away with that round there, but they have to be careful here. A couple of shots that they should be making from our angle of where we were, yeah. you know, they should be making those sort of shots. And if they don't, then it could cost them. I mean, it did previously, you know, Gitaga should have made that shot onto Tommy. I think he did actually have a pistol though, so sort of a bit of an excuse, but Toho, which is obviously Joe, gonna get the first kill and the first death for Epsilon. Yep, indeed. So let's turn on Oracle mode, won't we? Because there's a lot of people at home actually saying that they are big fans of Oracle mode. So we'll turn that on for you guys. Make sure that it's activated for you when enemies are nearby so we can see through the walls in a few seconds time. And we will see if Tommy's gonna be able to spot a player here towards the middle of the map. And, uh, yeah. Oh, oh Flux goes down. down. Now, on board with Swanee. Just wasn't working there for a second. <laughs> on board with Swanee now. Mm -hmm. Looking towards the back of American there. Lots of shots going to go down. He needs help on his teammate. Yep, he does indeed. Tommy, eight and two. Swanee, one and three at the second. Let's see if they are going to be able to get this. They are a man down. So it's Carnage, Gataga, and Broken, which they have to take out. And those French players do know where the bomb is, I'm pretty sure. So Swanee is going to be able to spot a player there. That player who was against him has backed away from that gunfight. But having a look at Tommy and Swanee now, they're moving up together. This is great teamwork coming in from both of them. Lots of shots going down. Swanee's going to move forward here. Again, hasn't spotted that player. Look how close they are. We can see with the Oracle mode. Swanee with the first kill in that little gunfight there. He is going to be able to try and plant the bomb as well. Is he going to do it successfully? 16 seconds left on the clock. Bomb does go down. Carnage does take down Swanee. Those are in a good position to do something. Tommy's going to get one kill. Carnage is going to jump around the corner. He's going to get the kill. And that's going to be 3-2 now to Vi Vitality, yeah. Yes, <laughs> it is indeed. This is so close that we're even almost mixing up who is winning the rounds in some ways because this is just so difficult to tear these two teams apart. Carnage, 6-4 and four, with one defuse and one plant to his name. That's going to put him on a three streak at the second. Tommy still leading the way for Epsilon, 9-3. and three. And who do you think is going to take this one ton just from what we've seen so far? Uh, I still think Epsilon may take this map. Though. I did say previously, I think that... You know, Vitality, we're going to take the S&D, but I think Epsilon are looking pretty strong here. Tommy's going 9-3. Vitality really need to step it up a notch if they want to take this map. They are currently in the lead, though, and have made the first kill on the round. So Tommy does go down, and the bomb looks like it's going down. Yep, very large pick there, because now the rest of the Epsilon squad are having to rotate over, and you do see that that bomb has been planted. So, of course, Epsilon having to take out all four members of Vitality. Oh, that's, that's a, a big grenade. grenade there from Flux. And he's so famous for those as Jerd gets another one. Jerd taking down Blue. So now three versus two. But Vitality have done so, so well here. It's great movement from them. And Carnage 
He's going to come directly behind him and he's going to be spotted. Oh, That's good wow. awareness Flux. by Flux there. Kataga, last man alive. Is he going to catch Flux? Oh, God, Flux Again, just Flux. absolutely dominated them there. Three kills at least. Did he get that? I don't know if he got all four. Flux just went absolutely crazy. He got that first grenade off and then he got pretty much two complete turn-ons there whilst he was in that doorway towards America. Yeah, you got three kills there with uh, Jade picking up one. So great work by Flux just covering that back end there. That's going to be 3-3 three, three now, very evenly posted. Yep, yeah, it is indeed. So once again, the English squad, Flux, who've managed to pick up three kills. As we have said, the man on your screen starting to make their way towards the bomb site here. Let's see if they are going to be able to pick up any early kills in the round, which will, of course, give them ad that advantageous position to try and get the bomb down. Flux is he just going to be aiming towards this room at the second. We'll see if he's going to be able to pick up anybody as they make their way towards the B to the bomb site board with Flux at the minute. They're just trying to get a grenade off. Don't think that's going to come off for him, though. Not even. Oh, it's a smoke grenade throughout, actually. On board with Flux, though. Currently still four versus four. Both teams just trying to get a feel for where each other are. Lost where the fourth player is for Epsilon. And that is actually going to be Tommy who picks up a two-piece in the center of the map. That's really going to help them towards B. Oh, is he going to be able to this make a kill? This is just so cool. It's nice to see, but it, oh my god, it, you know, it's, it's easy for us to say though, what players should be doing and stuff like that. Oh, oh god, Gitarga. That's the sort of thing this guy can do. He's in a good position here, just needs to defend. Has to be careful though, because the enemy team are really watching where he's going. He doesn't see that. Oh, yes, he does see that, that player's there. He's going to pick up some hit markers. The bomb has gone down. The crowd definitely reacting to that play. It's now a one versus two. Gataga against Tommy and Swanee. Of course, Tommy, 11 kills to his name. Is he going to pick up the first kill? No, Gataga missing shots again, having to pull out that sniper rifle. What's happening? Gataga is usually so on point with his shot. This is what I mean. I think he can blow hot and cold sometimes, Gataga. At the moment, not blowing hot. He could still potentially do this. Ooh, if he can that quick scope in there. Gitarga does go down. That's going to be 4-3 to Epsilon. Oh, wow. I mean, what would have happened if he had picked that first kill down to Swanee? Do you reckon he would have got the one versus two clutch? It's hard to say. It is really hard to say. I think, you know, I, I think what it was, was it Tommy was left with it? Yeah, there? it was. Yeah, so I think Tommy was in a good position. He was at the back, currently going at 11 and 4. You probably wouldn't have bet against him. I mean, we're going to have to go on board with somebody else from Vitality. I think going on board with Carnage, Broken still not having the best of games, but same time, you know, he's one of these guys that can consistently turn things around. So Carnage really trying to cause some noise over at A there, and it's not really going to do anything because Epsilon are very aware of where Vitality are pushing. Yeah, but actually Flux has gone down there. As you do see Vitality with what looks like a relatively slow push towards B from some of the players, although some of them are quite advanced through the second. They are known for challenging things quite aggressively. Didn't work in Blue's favor as he got taken out by Jerd that was, but Broken manages to take out Tommy. Man advantage in favor of Vitality. On board with Carnage here now, trying to get this round back and draw things up. If they were to go 5-3 down, that would really He's stabbing the heart. Gitarga, can he make this kill here? No, he can't do. Mtar was used effectively. Last man alive is going to be Swanee. He's going to be taken down. That's going to be 4-4. Vitality here. Very, very well played. They're trying to get back in this game. They were 3-2 at lost two rounds in a row. Now at 4-4, the game is once again very evenly poised. I can't call this at the moment, Chewie. No, neither can I. And this is what's so great about this search and destroy game mode, is it really brings out the best in absolutely everybody. Tommy, of course, top fragging for the Epsilon team and top of the entire leaderboard, actually 11 and 5. So doing some great work overall. So I think we're going to have to switch on board with him. He got two frags in the last attacking round. Of course, opening those gates there in the middle of the map. It's something we gunshot. see quite often, because yeah. you know, if, if, if that gate is in the way at some point, then it really can cause a problem for you if you try and open it. But I'm just going to go on board with Kataga here. On the defensive side, Bob being very, very aggressive. It looks like he's going to pick up one kill there. It does take out Tommy. Very good pick by Kataga. Let's jump back on board with the Epsilon team. That's really going to pin them in. Look how pinned in they are. And look at this guy here, blue, in a great position. Yeah, he is indeed. You do see the man, Jerd, on your screen. King Jerd, as he is better known to some. See Good what he's move gonna by do. Epsilon. It looks yeah. as if they're going to try and turn around towards it. Great Best thing to do. They were really pinned in here. And they're really going to have to walk themselves out here. Yes. in the middle of the map. Wow, who's sitting there? Oh. No cover against Jud. That's a big mistake to make. That's going to be broken. So he's going to get a kill onto Kataga as well. So two versus two, as it does seem as if Flux went down. Yep, so it's Swanee and Jerd going up against the likes of Carnage and Blue. See where those players are situated. It is going to be Jerd on your screen. 
26 seconds left on the clock. Looks like they are maybe going to be successfully able to plant this bomb just so close that there is going to be a player coming around the back. It is going to be, be blue. Actually, he doesn't spot that player. Tries to get some shots down. Is he going to be able to pick up the kill? Yes, he is. Does get taken down one on one. Carnage versus Swanee. It's a big battle going to go down here. It's Swanee. As we can see in Oregon, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to turn that off just so we cannot really see exactly where he is. I want to see build some tension here. We do not know where the players are going to be coming from. It looks as if Swanee's going to come around behind him though. In the minimap on the left, he <gasps> can see him on board with Carnage. Oh, Swanee's Swanee. going to get the better of him now. That's going to be five for Epsilon one round away from going two nil up. Yep, and this is such a huge round. For Rises, of course, if they lose this, if all four of them go down, not only does that lose them the round, that then means that they are one map away from being knocked out of this single elimination tournament. Epsilon will take a 2-0 lead in the series if they do this. And I thought this was potentially a series which could go right to the end and go right to the fifth map. If Epsilon take the second map and do go 2-0 up, that's really going to put them in an advantageous position to just take the series 3-0. Yeah, and this is the map that I predicted Vitality are going to win, and they really need to win it as well. I think Epsilon's running going game mode is too strong for them, so they need an s &D in their back pocket. On board with Broken now, not had the greatest of maps so far. But so far in the series, you know, last game played very, very well for his team. Yeah. Unfortunately, they couldn't do anything about it. Blue's going to be the first one to pick up a kill, though. Flux does go down, shots go down all over the place. Kataga picks up another sniper kill. Swanee answering back, though, taking out Blue. Yep, indeed. So now it's a two on three. Swanee and Tommy, top of the leaderboards for the Epsilon squad. He's got no cover yep. here, oh, broken. broken. does get taken down by Tommy, that is. So now it's evened up onto the two on two. Carnage manages to get a kill, oh. not getting the second. Tommy once again, just showing his worth. Is he going to be able to pick up the last? No, he is not. Turn, we are going to the 11th round, but Tommy is playing so well, 13 and 7. Is he going to be the factor which carries Epsilon to victory here on Search and Destroy Warhawk? Or are Vitality going to even up the series? We're about to find out. Well, Vitality for me really do need, need to do it. I've said this before, they need this game if they want a chance in this match. S&D wins your games. I'm going to stick on board with the Katarga because, you know, he's getting a couple of sniper picks, but I don't think we've actually seen him do it physically. I think, oh, he's actually switching up to his amp He's going to change it around. Stay on board with him, though. Looks as if they're going towards here. I've episode predicted it, though. We'll have a look and see if they have smoke grenades going down around the area where Flux is at the second. This is going to be such a huge round. We'll, we'll see who gets the this initial pick. And Carnage, once again, on your screen now, moving through bottom genus. Let's see where he's going to go. This is good. Swanning does go down. There you go, Jared. Answer is back, but Jared does go down too. But you know that that's going to distract. This is brilliant from Vitality because now Epsilon are being distracted away, but they somehow turned around. Tommy's going to turn around. Gitaga and Broken last two alive. Bomb does go down. Broken is going to be in an awful position here. Shotgun and Hardy needs help from his teammate Gitaga, but Gitaga staying in a position where he can stay alive. But Broken does go down. Yep, indeed. Oh, he does pick up that first kill onto Tommy. Is he going to be able to get the second one? Flux is the last one left alive, and there we go. He does go down. We hear the stamping through the stage. Six five. It is two rounds in a row for Vitality. Wow, I was on the edge of my seat in that yeah, game. Yeah, Vitality so. really did well there. It, it, you know, that, that attack was brilliant because they had people over at B and they were causing problems. So Epsilon thought, God, they're planning at B. They started running. And I don't know if they just noticed somebody or just seen somebody. Thought, no, they're right here. There's Broken. Yeah, Obviously, he's very <laughs> happy. You know, he didn't have a quick hit me, but his team did come through. You know, sort of the opposite of what we've seen last time around because he did have a very good game and his team didn't come through. But then this time, you know, his team repaid him for his good game in map number one. We're going to see map number three coming up in just a second. Do not go anywhere.
guys, and welcome back here to the European Qualifiers for the World Championships of Call of Duty. My name is Tony, I am here with Chewy. We're poised at 1-1 between two of the best teams in Europe. Vitality taking on Epsilon. Vitality just taking that S&D away. A very close game, and once again, the first map was pretty close as well. Yeah. I, I, I still think <laughs> Epsilon are going to win 3-1. I still think they're going to go away with it, because I just think their running gun is better than Vitality's. I, I just think they can go away and do it. They proved that. Brogan had a very good game in the first map. Mm. We're actually going to walk through the Vitality squad. We do have them that here yeah, now. Of course, we did walk through Epsilon previously, but we're going to go through the Vitality squad now. Just starting this next map. Blitz, right? There's Gitarga. Of course, the French Monster, one of the most popular Call of Duty players in the world, situated next to his teammates. And the next team member is going to be Broken. You know, had a very, very good game on the first map. Last map, not so much, but his team really did pull through and help him out there. And moving on to the third player, we do have Carnage, one of the guys he's been around for a very, very long time. Very good player in and out of the best top French teams. A very good game last game as well. And of course, the final player, Blue, formerly known as Diablo, hiding behind his screen there as we get into the game. And we're going to jump straight into that now. Let's see what happens. Where, where are you going with this? Because you said that you feel as if, well, you've spoken to them and you said yeah. Blitz is definitely not their favorite game time, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad at it. Yeah, indeed. And we're going to see what happens here. Actually, I want to jump on board with Gataga. He is actually my favorite Blitz player that I've seen so far on Call so of Duty Ghosts. So good this weekend. What we've seen yeah. for his previous game, absolutely all over it. Let's see if he can do it He's against gonna be a big Epsilon. Factor. Definitely. Let's see what's going to happen. He does actually have to buy some by the looks of things. Yep, he does indeed. And the last time I saw him on this map, he picked up a huge two-piece and instantly got the capture earlier on. So we'll see if he's going to be able to repeat something of the like here. Of course, these French players choosing those high sensitivities a lot of the time. He's going to get some shots down there. Is he oh, going to be able to nice. pick up the kill? All over the place. Unfortunately, he isn't able to do that. So we're going to switch on board with Carnage. Picks up his second kill of the round in the defense position. Very good defensively, but now Epsilon have got control. You can see in that top left-hand side corner, Tommy's coming in with kill on Carnage. You're going to have to click on the buttons to change between players because a lot of people are going to do it. go down very, very quickly on board with Jerd. Now one killer who's named Tommy with three. Currently, Jerd does go down. Yep, indeed. So we'll switch on board with Swanee at the second, trying to do some defense work himself. Is able to pick up that kill there onto Broken. That will see somebody in the middle. Is able to get another one. Things all even though turn. We're at 1-1 one, one with just one minute left. Uh, sorry, one minute gone on the clock. On board now with somebody. <laughs> on board sorry. now with Tommy. Let's see what he can do. Going underground as well. It's not something you see too often because obviously that negates away from your, helping your team out, you know. So, I'm gonna try and mix it up. Yeah, somebody's defended fantastically. I think it's blue at the back here for Vitality. Not gonna not help quite him enough. <laughs> Tommy runs around the back, really baited him out with opening the door there. Good work by Tom. Yep, indeed he did, making sure to distract that player and then push around the back and just do that gorgeous knee slide in. He's gonna find another player there, gets the kill. Is he gonna be able to pick up the second? No, he's not. Oh, just unfortunate. Not able to pick up that one, so we'll switch up with the guy who did kill him. Unfortunately, he goes down. So let's switch over to Carnage, back onto the French squad of Rises. Well, there you go. It seems as if Epsilon have that control currently at the moment. They're going to try and push through, try and pick up a point. Both of them go down. Broken picking up a two-piece with that Vector. Broken have a bit of a better game here now. Currently 3-3 three and three with one capture. Let's go on board with him. Vector in hand. Let's see what we can do with a different type of gun. Enemy has scored, so that's going to be 4-2. Should be at this point there. Yep, he does. Good work by Broken. They seem to just like Epsilon are getting their points because they're pushing in now well and very, you know, getting control. Vitality just seem to be sneaking through, and they're not going to complain about that 5-3. Now two episodes on two minutes and 50 seconds remaining on yep. the clock. Indeed, and we do see Broken there closing that front door to make sure that there's no avenue of oh, shots coming in from there. Or any players going in, that was an important kill, as you do say, taking out Flux there. Score still in favor of Epsilon. He does go down. Two piece though, that's very important. He's going to get a point on the board as well. 6-3, fantastic work by Swanee there. Just basically yeah. took on the whole Vitality team and got himself a point on the board. Let's go on board with Jerd though. He's top of the leaderboard. Seven streak for Jerd right now. Six to three, two kill death ratio with three captures to his name. Teammate's just been able to push in there. He does pick up another kill. Let's see if he can stay alive. This is the tactic I was talking oh, about. You know, you've got unlucky. somebody at the front there. Who's that from Epsilon who's really pushed up? It's going to be Tommy right now. He's going to be ahead now. He's going to be getting the kills, trying to pick up as many as he can. Oh, oh my Tommy. God. Tommy picking up a two piece there. That's going to cause a distraction to Vitality. He's going to be able to move in there, but the rest of his team have moved up so that he can retake his position, spearheading that attack. Epsilon in full control here. Eight three up, two minutes remaining. Yep, map control in favor of Epsilon. As you do say, Tommy finding another player in the middle he on just the train get out there. Shot. Yeah, he just does not ever miss a shot, this guy, I swear. And he is able to push through there. Does take one bullet of damage, but is able to capture another point. Epsilon extending their lead. Nine to three. We're gonna stay They're on all board over with Tommy. Look at now. Epsilon I mean, look at on it. that point at the moment. There's literally three of them lined up. They are lining up to jump in this point at the moment. They're just because they have the slaying power over 
Vitality at the moment. Vitality just are not getting a favorable spawn because of where Epsilon are. Tommy's going to jump in there, but there's people are still rolling in and rolling off. But that does allow Vitality to run through the middle of the map, but uncontested pretty much. Yep. And get a point, but it's all a little too little too late. You know, 11 to 4, Swanning and Flux picking up because that's 12 to 4 now. One minute and 20 seconds remaining. Yep, so switching on board with Flux. We'll see what work he can do. 10 and 5, he is bottom of the leaderboard for his team, but it doesn't matter. He's on a 7 streak, doing great work himself. Nice. He does <sighs> unfortunately get knives to a switch back up to Tommy. And now he's staying on board with the Epsilon squad a lot, but they are doing oh such great God. work. And you cannot stay away from this man when he's on a 10 streak, exactly what you would expect from the game changer. You know what? Like, there's players in the game that can do things for their team. Tommy is so good to watch, though. Just the way he moves around and gets the kills. Fantastic to watch. Fantastic player. Swanning and Flux playing with kills. They're just getting points of fun here. Look at them. They're lining up in the minute. Let's just walk through that vitality score. A 9-9 nine nine from Broken once again. When he seems to have a good game, the references of his team seem to drop off. 4 and 12 for Blue, 5 and 14 for Kataga, Carnage 7 and 12. Epsilon are too much vitality here, and I think this is going to be 2 1, and I think they'll walk away with the series 3 1, because this is big. 16 to 5. Yep, indeed. 16 to 6, 10 points difference there, as we do see a Vitality player managing to get another one. Now Tommy, Vitality are over it, though. Yeah, I know. They've started to get into it here, but Tommy just in that sneaky position once again. I know we've been on board with him for a while, but when, as I say, you know, when he's been on this sort of streak, you just got to watch how he plays it because it's a masterclass. He is unfortunately going to get taken out there. We'll switch on board with Broken just for the last few seconds. Six seconds left on the clock. Vitality are going to come down here, and they've got a lot of work to do in the second half turn. They've caught up two points at the very end there, you know, so I mean, they've still got something to hold on to. And I definitely think um, the new side that Epsilon were on is the easier side. Yeah. But at the same time, it's a big deficit. Mm. Nine, nine points is a lot. Oh, yeah, it is indeed. But having a look at the streaks, actually, five streak there for Broken, four yeah, for Blue, two for Kataga, the yeah, and three for Carnage. So, Broken, the man on your screen. Again, one of the players that I really said can stand out for this Vitality Rises squad. We'll see what he can do. He's top fragging for the team with 13 kills at the second. Make that 14 as he picks up his six point in a row. Is he going to find somebody here? Yes, he does, but unfortunately gets taken out. So, switching on board with Blue gets the first point in the game of this half, 17 to 9. Epsilon have to be careful there because Vitality had a nice little streak going for themselves. They can't let them build confidence. So Vitaly, I think, might have a chance of catching up, but currently the score is doubled. <laughs> Epsilon 18 to 9 at the moment. Yep, it's indeed. So staying on board with Blue for the second to see if he can continue this streak. Does find the player there as the Epsilon guys do manage to get in again. Lots of shots going down. I think that was Flux who was ahead of him, backing away from that. Or oh, even more shots going down. Jerk manages to get one. Blue still here taking a lot of fire. That's three go down. Carnage, last one left alive. Enemy has gone in once again, which means Epsilon still racking up their lead. And they're just dominating once again here on Blitz. The thing is with Epsilon, they're going at them from very different angles all over the place. Tommy picking up a Another one, 21 to 9 at the moment. The lead is just extending for Epsilon. Three minutes and 50 seconds remaining. Let's have a look at the scoreboards. 15 to 6 with Tommy. Those nine captures are the big difference, though. 14 kills apiece for all of Epsilon as well. 11 deaths for both Swanee and Flux. Jade with 14 deaths, but does have those captures as well. But at the moment, definitely Epsilon looking very, very strong. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what the French monster can do. Gataga not having the best game so far, unfortunately. He's 8 to 19, 8 to 20, make that as he does go down. So we will switch up to the man on a four streak, which is Carnage. Does find another player there, but isn't able to pick up the kill. Hit marker's going down on two players. His team has managed to score one, though, and it's instantly traded by Epsilon. This is the thing with Epsilon. If a point goes down away from them, they are just instantly there to up another one and keep that distance between the two squads. On board with Carnage now, just trying to hold down this left hand side. For me, I think he should have pushed up once he's seen all those players going past for Epsilon. You know, it's all good in hindsight. You know, you, you know that the teammates did pick up the kills, but I think he should have pushed forward, try to get some points on the board because it did look as if Epsilon were going to get a point themselves, and they did so blue with a nice turn on to Flux there. It's going to get the point. Yep, indeed, he does so blue, of course. As soon as he manages to push through that blitz portal area, he is going to respawn right back at the base and he's going to be trying to push forward once again, successfully getting that kill onto Tommy, almost getting that kill onto Jerd, but he does go down. He's stacked up on the point here. You know, yep. if Broken can hold this down and have some more support from his team, Epsilon are doing the right thing, though. They're running down the other side of the map and they're just going to say, right, okay, yeah, you can get points, but we're going to be stacking up ourselves and getting points ourselves. The lead is still 10 points with two and a half minutes remaining. Epsilon playing it well. Yep, indeed, so we'll stay on board with Broken for the second off the respawn for him. Four captures to his name. Is he going to make it five? Yes, he does. Advancing his position forward. 
straight off the respawn for him. So great work coming in. 25 to 15 is your score. Still that 10 point lead coming in for Epsilon. Staying on board with Broken just for a while longer, just to see what work he can do. He's on a four streak at the second. Still with those five captures. Two minutes left on the clock, Ton. I do just think that Epsilon are going to be able to take this game, I'm afraid. Yeah, Vitaly have definitely stepped it up from the previous, um, but at the same time, Epsilon have just kept that lead maintained it through this half and uh, you know oh, oh that was nasty God, dude with a naughty turn on i think it was on carnage there that's gonna dent his confidence no more oh wow Jared, just the sort of player that can pull those things off but you know this is the thing that i love about blitz there's so many different situations that your team has to take into mind it's really about good teamwork and sort of split second decisions you know do i go back do i go forward you know it can really just determine a game a couple of decisions and Epsilon's decision in the first half was just going to go, right, okay, we're just going to go at them, we're going to stay in the best, and we're just going to sit on the point and get every single point we can. Currently have a 10-point lead with one minute remaining. Yep, indeed, so Blue manages to pick up a kill there towards the middle of the map. He's going to find a second player. Hit marker's going down, tries to get the wall bang, unfortunately doesn't work, so he's going to push forward, does find that player. Great kill coming in from Blue. He is going to score the point as well, making that a nine-point deficit with one minute late. left on the clock. It is too late indeed, so Epsilon... We have confirmation now they're going to be taking a 2-1 lead in the series. Ton, they are one map away from the final. Yeah, and well deserved. Very, very well played on this map so far. And you just think, can Vitality really do it on the next map? Let's have a look what the next map is actually going to be. It's going to be domination on Sovereign. I just think that, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be too much for Vitality. I don't think they're going to be able to take this next map. Epsilon far too strong at the moment. Although the lead has reduced, I think the game has been over for a little while now. So I don't necessarily know. If Epsilon are really going full gear, but at the moment, Epsilon very comfortable. Yep, indeed, very comfortable indeed. Just racking down the last few seconds of the game. Flux, the man on your screen, three streak to his name at the second. Seven captures as he manages to extend the lead here for Epsilon. 21 to 18 is his score. Great work coming in. And Tommy, everybody says that he's a factor in this game. 11 captures oh then, make God. that 12, doing most of the slaying power as well. I thought that was actually well. one of their players. Yeah, there. so was I. <laughs> but yeah, Tommy, very, very impressive there. 3,000 points to his name at the end of that game. Good work by him. And Epsilon, in the end, win by 10 points. Yep, indeed. So that was actually a really high-scoring game there. You know, we see that sometimes on a map like Freight can really get aggressive. Lots of submachine gun power coming in. 31 captures in total for Epsilon. Only 21 for Vitality. Usually that sort of number of 21 captures would be able to win you the game in most circumstances. But Epsilon, too strong there. Tommy, definitely the best player in that game, although all of the Epsilon guys played very, very well. So Epsilon, as we do say, one single map away from being able to get the advantage position and go through to the finals, which means that they are one game away from then being able to, uh, you know, get that 15,000 euro prize pot. Can't complain about that whatsoever. The 15,000 euro prize pot for me is secondary to the fact that they're going to get a brilliant seed if they go, in, uh, well, whoever wins it, they're going to get a brilliant seed going into world championships. When, of course, there is $1 million on the line. Yeah. Do not go anywhere. Map number three, four. <laughs> Completely <laughs> messed it up. Map number four coming up just after this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the first semi-final match here of the European Championships on Call of Duty Ghosts at Twickenham Stadium in London. My name is Chewy. Joined here by Tun, we have got Epsilon Gaming, the UK squad, going up against the French power squad of Vitality Rises. It's 2-1 in the lead here for Epsilon. We are getting pumped for this fourth map. I can't yeah. wait to see it. It's domination on Sovereign. Yeah, it's... Wow, you know, I think... The way Epsilon just dealt with that last map, though, I can't see it happening for Vitality. Unfortunately, they'll be very, very happy to get this far. They obviously are going to LA. Get themselves a good seat going in there as well. You, you, you can't complain at the moment, but no. Epsilon for me, after that last map, wow. I mean, look how the, they look pretty dejected there. I mean, Kishaga needs to G them up a little bit. Come yeah. on, they need, you know, this is what they need. They need to get themselves pumped up, think, right, that was, that was a different map. 
concentrate on this one. Yeah, they've got to completely come into this one. Forget that last map, just go into it. It is a new game mode, it is a new map. For you guys who missed it earlier on, we did play Domination on the map Octane. Seven points was the difference in favor of Epsilon. So we will see if they are going to be able to repeat that feat and take the series overall 3-1 or whether we will, we will be going to a last map in which Epsilon just lost out last time. That was Search and Destroy Warhawk, the second map of the series. So let's get into spectator mode, get everything set up for you guys. Domination on Sovereign it is. Oh, how many shotguns we got here? Um, yeah, let's go with Tommy yeah. then. You, you can't not really, the guy's got a shotgun. It's always interesting to watch. And yeah, make sure you tweet out all the information on the bottom of your screen, who you think is going to win this game, or even who your favorite team is. I, I would say who who's going to win it, but I think a lot of people will, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, currently, they are 2-1 up. Epsilon quite convincingly in that last map. And 91% of the boats still go towards Vitality. So <laughs> there you go. On board with Tommy. Let's see what he can do here. Yep, okay, getting very aggressive here. Moving actually past that B site at the second. Hello. He's going to find a player there. Point blank kill, as you do see on your screen. Taking out blue, of course. Exactly the same objectives as that first domination game to try and rack up as many points, holding down flags for as long as possible. Best Looks like actually, Vitality, yeah, though. Vitality. Managing to get a better start. They've got C and they've got B. Much better. Exactly the start that they needed to build some momentum and try and take this fourth map. Oh, good work by... Uh, Blue down the right-hand side there. Did very, very well on board with Jerd, though, in very advanced position here. Really just causing some problems for the Vitality team. But Vitality with definitely the better start. 25 points in the lead. Yep, indeed. Have a look and see what Jerd is going to do here. He does mean need to reload his gun at some point, but of course, because he is able to have that cover there from Tommy as they do take over C, it doesn't matter. He is able to reload it. Does find a player oh, at the top there. Is he going to get the kill? Yes, he it. does indeed. Swanee also picking up a kill there. And Swanee picking up a two-piece, actually, onto Blue and Gataga. Switching over to Tommy, though. Let's see if they can get B. Oh, gets one single bullet onto that player. Not going to work though switching over to flux he goes down swanee on a three streak let's see what work he can do well now he's here that it looks like vitality will probably go over towards C. yeah but that's going to free up epsilon to attack b that's the advantage getting the home flags so here we go epsilon going to make some sort of move up towards b yeah they're currently on it do get taken down though tommy goes down to carnage and they haven't been uh, aggressive enough for me i think they need to really push for b while they were losing c on board with Jerd though. He has some help from his teammate as well. Can he make that kill up top? Yes, he can. That was Tommy taking down Brogan. And they're in a good position to get this, and I think they will. Yep, they have indeed. Just managing to capture that site. Unfortunately, Jerd does go down just as he managed to get the points for that. But have a look at the scores. 23 to 24, sorry, 25 to 24. Epsilon managing to take the lead for the first time, I do believe, in this, uh, sorry, in this domination game here on Sovereign. <laughs> Three minutes, five seconds left on the clock. We'll see. What's going to happen here? Swanee just coming up from the underground section in an advanced position towards the enemy spawn. Who's he going to find? Tommy's on a pretty good kill streak. Sorry, I just moved away from Swanee picking up a kill, but they're going for the three cap here. It does seem as if Vitality are going to go for the capture on A. Epsilon very aware. And let's go on board with Broken. Does get taken down on board with Carnage, though. What can he do here? Eh, he's managed to get C just neutralized, so that's going to help them out here. But currently, the lead is in the favor of Epsilon. They are about seven points in the lead. Yep, of course, Flux, famous for his grenades, which he is throwing down there just to give himself some cover as he moved towards B. They are in control oh, of it. Switches them. away as soon as that player comes around the corner. Tommy picking God, up diamond. another kill there. He's eight and sorry, he's um, actually seven and four at the second with two captures to his name. Staying on board with him for the second. Using that MTAR does get taken out at long range by Broken. But Tun, this is still a very, very close game. Epsilon still just about in the lead. Yeah, very, very open. Flux not having the best of games for Epsilon, but he has made a couple of important kills. Let's see if he can step his game up. Or Sorry, I keep saying Tuja, but obviously it is Jerd. 8-6 at the moment. Top of the leaderboard over a raw. On board with Flux. Mm. Now I'm not going to be able to do anything on B as Vitality. Do you have control of that? I do have control of two. Oh, oh my God. Swanee coming in with some great shots there. That's going to enable them to push on to B. Three men down for Vitality. It's only really blue that's in a position to do anything. He does get taken out by Jed. Broken spawns back at his own flag. Yep, he does indeed. So having a look at the scores at the top of your screen, ladies and gentlemen, 57 to 43 it is, with 1 minute 38 seconds left on the clock. Just ticked over to 59 to 44. Still with Broken, the man on your screen. Actually going to switch over to Gataga, the French monster. Going to try and capitalize on B being open at the second. Does actually sponge that grenade. Gets taken out. That was Flux who takes him out with the Bison. Blue pushing in there. They are going to be able to secure B. Is this the comeback from Vitality. It's very, very close. Amble with Carnage now. Let's see what he can do. He needs to make this kill up top because now Epsilon have some sort of control over that. One's actually Flux, who's gonna... Uh, sorry, it was Jed who made the kill, but Flux is there too. He's gonna get taken out, though. But they're causing problems for Vitality, who have these two flags. 
going into the end, and this is going to be pretty close if it stays this way. Yep, it is indeed, and of course, Vitality, one of those squads who can definitely come back into this when needed, and if they do, they will force a map five against Epsilon, just what the viewers at home do want to see. But it actually looks like they are going to be losing C at the second. Headshot coming in from Carnage, taking out Tommy. He's successfully going to be able to capture A. Yes, he is indeed. Let's see what he's going to be able to do here. Actually, we'll switch over to Blue. He's going to be moving Sorry. towards C. No, it's all good indeed. 10 points the difference in the last 39 seconds, just managing to keep that lead Epsilon. But still, I think this is really going to come down to who can take it in the second half, because you cannot separate them here, Tan. No, not at all, but that's great work by Blue. He's managed to get a hold of C. They have A as well. He's going to capture that by the looks of things. So there you go. It does look as if Vitaly are going to close that gap. I think at a three cap, they might actually probably go in the lead, but I don't think they're going to be able to at this moment in time. It's still going to be very close going into the second half between these two teams. It's been very close all the way through. Vitality take it on Epsilon here, live from London in the European Call of Duty Championships. Of course, the winner of this will advance on to the final, get the seeding points for the World Championships. And of course, 15,000 euros goes to the winner. Yep, indeed. So AT minus 73 is going to be a seven point difference Did there. You have to coming work that out in on your calculator for there Epsilon. Or? Yeah, but I'm awful at maths. So I only just awful managed to get a C. It's 80 minus 73. But in this pressure situation, Tun, <laughs> it's one of those things that if I get wrong, I will forever be remembered for it. So just double short and making All sure. Right, I did know it was so seven, right. but just, you know, you had to just call me out on that, sure. didn't you, Tun? You had to call me out you on that. You go to university and claim you're clever. <laughs> Well, OK. We Actually, of course, a seven point difference was the total overall difference between these two squads in the first domination yep. game. Epsilon actually had a six point lead in the first half. Then Vitality managed to get a one point lead in the second half. So again, this is all to play for here. Anything could happen heading into the second half. I do believe really just having like a look at the leaderboard, Flux does have to slightly yeah. pick it up. At the beginning of the first map, you know, you've seen Epsilon have a great start, but Vitality really came in there. And up until the final 30 seconds, the game was still up in the air. We didn't know who was going to win. I mean, we're going to go into the next map in a second there, but very, very close between these two teams. It really could go either way. Yep, yeah, it could indeed. Unfortunately, we do have a black screen on our monitor at the seconds. Hopefully, it's not anything too. There we go. Straight back in as soon as I do say that. Actually, just moving back and forth. Hopefully, we will be able to get into the map as soon as possible. But still, this is such a great series turn. Exactly the Call of Duty action which we wanted to see. So, uh, I mean, it's just one of those things that it could go either way between these two teams. We've yeah. both predicted that Epsilon are going to be able to take it, but LAN is one of those environments where everybody says it's who shows up on the day. You can do so much preparation for it, which of course really does pay dividends, but it's who can show up, who's got that mental power as well, that mental mental stability to be able to take it. But again, of course, here at the Twickenham Stadium. Tan, how have you enjoyed your weekend so far? It's been great, you know, I mean, lots of good games going on. We still got the final coming up tonight. Well, we're on schedule. Yeah, we are you know, indeed. We're ahead of anything, so there you go. Everything is going to be going down at the correct times. Just having a couple of issues that we're trying to sort out at the moment. But, you know, coming into this now, who do you think is going to win it? I'm going to go with Epsilon. The whole thing. Oh, well, again, I'm going to go with Epsilon. Okay. I did call it before the event that they were going to take it, not taking anything away from the other teams, but they just look so strong. Again, you know, other casters have talked about it this weekend. The analysts have talked about it as well. Just the roster that they have now, how experienced they are, how well they've gelled with each other, just means that they are one of those opponents which I don't think anybody would want to try and face up against. So again, guys, we do apologize for the delays before we head into the second half of domination on the map Sovereign. But just to run through those scores for you earlier on in the series, Epsilon taking the first game, domination by seven points. 6-5, Vitality took search and destroy, then into the Blitz game, it was 31-21. Seven in favor of Epsilon. So here we go, we're actually on board with the game in the second half going ahead. Let's stay on board with the action. It is Blue who gets Such taken out. Such good reactions from Jade every single time. Yeah. Tommy picking up two kills straight off the bat here as well. Good start for Epsilon. Both teams have their home flag. And here we go, Jed moving in for B. Yep, three momentarily down there for Vitality, which means that the guys from Epsilon will be able to take advantage of this B side. Jed actually oh, stunned him. He does so get taken fun. out. Blue played so well in that first half, picking up over 17 kills. I do believe he's managed to get a massive two piece there onto that B flag, but unfortunately he does get taken out. Tommy picking up a kill there onto Carnage. Very even start here within the first minute. All scores still even. Yeah, still even, of course, at the difference is seven as you mathematically worked out. Thank you. On board with Kataga, one and three at the moment. Let's see what he can do here with the Bison. Oh, running around top control area. And once again, the knives from Epsilon are so, so good. Winning in those battles every single time. Indeed. Okay, Swanee, the man on your screen, using the Remington at the second. See, he's actually been neutralized at the second, so one team in capturing of one flag each actually be in control. But you know, that suits Epsilon because yeah, they're it in does. the league. Because yeah. at the moment, no score is changing. 
Both teams are going to get a point every five seconds. So it's Epsilon. They can deal with that. Yeah, they can indeed. And Swanee's actually just happy here to stick back, not even yeah, challenge that seed flag. They don't even second. need to do anything. They yeah. do not need to do anything. Vitality are the ones that need to move. Swanee knows that. He now knows he's there. His bullets could go behind Yellow Bin. That's going to be a kill, but um, Vitality actually managed to get the flag there, so yeah. it work. Swanee actually has, does have a player next to him, which means that he, they are going to be able to jump onto that. But B is actually in control oh. of Epsilon once again. Tommy with another two piece, taking out Gataga and Carnage will switch over to Broken. One and four at the second, so not having the hottest start for him. He is going to be able to secure B. This is so important to see if he's going to be able to capture that. Three players of Vitality oh, all on facts. top of that. They are able to get that. Oh, wow. Great grenades coming in. Flux managing to get two. He is so famous for his grenading skill. He's one of the best in the scene in the entire world for his grenades. Oh, yeah. No, he gets multiple kills on map with that. And, it, you know, when he's not necessarily firing on the game, if he's picking up those nade kills, it makes his stats a little better. It helps his team out. And it's a real good sort of ability to have in your back pocket. On ball with him now. Up in top control. It's a good place to have an SMG. Lots of co close quarters. Of course, with a weapon like the Vector, you can do a lot of damage over a long range too. On board with Katarga now, and they currently have control of the two flags. Good defensive work there as well. Taking out Jared. Yep, that was indeed. So having a look at the scores, Vitality just managing to take the lead here in this Domination Sovereign. Second half, 39 to 36 is, which means that overall, it's a four-point difference between these two teams. Neither so, team so can close. seem to hold it down, though. They seem no. to get the two flags, and they can't hold it down. Both teams playing very, very well. Carnage is going to pick up a two-piece, though. That's really going to help his team out. Let's go on board with Swanee. What can he do about B? Not much at the minute. He's not really running into any danger. And let's go on board with Flux. Yep, so Flux, the man on your screen, using the buys and heading over towards that B site. He is in top control at the second. Oh, just find one player there. Lays down the trophy system in midair as he jumps down. Is going to be securing B. Can they lock this one down? Of course, that trophy system just managed to cover him. Great work coming in. They are able to successfully get B, but because that trophy system has been blown up, heavily stunned. Blue gets a two-piece. He's going to jump onto B. Is Tommy going to be able to get the revenge kill? No, Blue with the three-piece. That could prove absolutely oh, essential. But Jerd, oh, wow. This is just phenomenal, Tan. It's going all the way down to the wire. This one, I think, Chewie on board with Flux. He gets taken down by Tally in the driving seat at the moment. Currently 10 points in the lead on this half. So three points on overall. Let's see what Epsilon can do to try and bring this back. Flux is going to run straight into somebody there. Night kill with the animation does slow him down just a little bit. But on board with him still. They need to jump B and they need to do it quickly. They're currently 13 points behind on this side. So seven points down overall. They need a two cap for the rest of the game. This is so close between these two teams. Less than a minute left on the clock. 68 to 54 is your score here. Swanee, the man on your screen. Carnage is going to go down to him using that Remington. Can they lock this down? We're about to find out. Swanee does go down, though. So this is Judd. He's going to be capturing C, trying to change things about. He oh, it's needed to get that kill. They're losing B as well. It's looking as if Vitality may take this one away. 35 seconds remaining. It's still up in the air. Can Epsilon do this here? And, you know, Vitality have defended this so, so well. I think we're going to map number five yeah. here, Chewie. It's Looks impossible now for Epsilon to bring this back. Vitality, take map number four. We are going to the last map. Search and destroy on Octane. It is going to be. This is what we want from the European Championships here, Tun. We want last maps. We want nail biters. We want the best Call of Duty action possible here. That is exactly what we're getting from these two teams. Vitality going absolutely huge in the second half of Domination on the map. Sovereign, I feel this could be another 11th round. Uh, you know, it wouldn't even surprise me. It would not surprise me. Such a great game going down here. In the end, the difference uh, would work out as... 11. 11. And I did that without my calculator. Uh, Thank you very much. Me, me, me. Ha, see, <laughs> taking you back on that one there. But there we go. Vitality managing to take it. 15 and 12 for Gataga at the top of the team with three captures to his name. Three captures also for Blue. Blue was one of those players who really proved that essential. That, yeah, that was it. That was what pretty wow. much won them the map. But guys, what a series that we are able to bring you here from Twickenham Stadium at the European Championships. Let's find out who's going to be going to the finals right after this break.
Hello guys and welcome back to the European Regional Qualifiers. My name is Tony, I'm here with Chewy, who by the way, got the maths wrong, it was actually 12 points. And he even worked I was so close. I you was know, so close. I'm not very good at maths, okay? Stop tried, putting me on blast, tried, okay? Don't remind me, try and do that. It's a I thought I'd just double check, but anyway, no matter whether it was 11 points or 12 still points, at the end of the day, it was still a phenomenal game. Vitality managing to take it, the evening things up. Epsilon took the first domination game, Vitality taking the second game, Epsilon trading again, taking the blitz, Vitality trading once more on the domination. We are going into the last game. We are ready to start this one up. Final map coming up between Epsilon and Vitality Rises. It's Search and Destroy on Octane. Now Octane, Search and Destroy. I think Vitaly are a better search and destroy team. I didn't predict it to get this far. No, we thought it was both going to be three ones in favor of yeah. Epsilon, didn't we? So, going into this game, Vitaly are going to be confident here. Yeah, they have to be. Well, I mean, you heard them. Wow, I mean, they are, I mean, I was speaking to you in the break. I think this might fall off the stage. We're going to have win. to run. As yeah, soon as this game ends, if the they way, win. The, the, you know, the desk's just going to go. I mean, yeah. they, they will go mental if they win this. Epsilon will no doubt be happy as well, but I'm going to let you drive this one, Chewy. Yep, Search and Destroy good. on Octane is the map that we're going to be watching. Vitality taking on Epsilon, the semi-final of the European Championship qualifier. Yep, it is. So Vitality will be your attacking squad off the start here. Only one member spawning in the second. There we you go. Looks like they are them. all going to be coming in. So Kataga is going to be the man on your screen. Is the last Vitality player coming in. That is broken. He needs to switch the teams. There we go. He is on board. So we have four players on both sides, Vitality and Epsilon. Let's have a look at the Twitter polls, hopefully in a second. See what's going on in the fifth map here. This is all coming down to the wire. Vitality heading towards B. Yeah, well, let's see if Kataga can get a pick off here towards Gas. He's got an annoying little spot himself, Ooh, but Flux. Fox is going to come in there straight away with the Bison taking down Blue. And Gitarga only has a pistol to his name, as well as the Sniper, broken in a great position. Yep, he is indeed using this Bulldog. He is the Bomb Carrier. Do like jumping on board with the Bomb Carrier to see what work they can do. See if they are able to successfully plant it. You know, I'm interested. Look at this guy in the top left corner. He's causing a lot of distraction for Epsilon. Now Vitality, they need to think about planting because Carnage is causing problems here. And that's making Epsilon think. Right, which way they're going? Like, they've got a guy at A, they've got guys at B, which way they're going? Broken's now gonna switch it up and go towards A. It's not personal what I would've done, I would've sticked around B, but there you go, it is gonna be Flux coming around the back there. That's two kills in a row for him, two kills in a row for Carnage too. So two versus two. Guitar and Carnage taking on Flux and Jet. Yep, Carnage, he is on your screen using the m -tire. He is gonna be able to pick up the bomb. Is he going to be able to meet somebody here? Yes, he is. Put shots down range. Unfortunately, not able to pick up any hit markers with that. Oh, Flux is going to be able to get him, which means Gataga is left in a one versus two. Running dead. with that pistol at the second. He is dead indeed. Flux with three kills in the round. Lovely start for him. Just the momentum boots that Epsilon needed. Are they going to be able to take this turn? Yeah, well, there you go. Winning their defensive round is something they'd probably expect, but Flux played so, so well there. Just ran straight through the middle of the map in your apartments and messed with the heads. But Carnage played a good game there. For me, I think Broken should have stayed over a B. I don't know if anyone disagrees, but I think you should have stayed over and try and plant it there because they were just concentrating on Carnage. Like, this guy's just getting two kills over here. Like, let's let's sort it out. Would have distracted them away. Let's see which way they're going. Now. They're sending two to the center. Probably one of them sniping here. And I'm going to stay on. We'll stay on board with Flux. Let's yeah, see indeed. what's going to happen around the center Ooh, of the map. We could. Put Oracle mode on for you guys to see what's going on at the second. Flux, the man on your screen. Actually, Tommy's going to go down there. So that means that it's a three on four situation. Oh, Swanee is going to go down as well. So now it's a two on four. Man advantage heavily in favor of Rises. Flux still moving with his Bison. Ball See what he's going to be able to do. So difficult for him right now. He's just trying to change things up here. It's 2v4. Jordan Flux. You know, <laughs> I think it's going to be really hard for them to do this. They're really closed in and around B. If they can get the bomb down, then, you know, let's see what happens. But that's going to be the problem. Yeah. The Vitality closing the grip in here. I'm with Flux. Jed goes down to Kataga with the sniper rifle. And it looks like Vitality are going to pick up their first round of SD. Any second now, there you go. Broken's going to get the kill. That's 1 1 between the teams in the final map. Yeah. And this is just really emphasizing the point that how close these two teams are. Both managing to take successful rounds on the defensive side. So heading into round number three. What are Vitality going to do? Are Epsilon going to be able to take another defensive round? We will have to see. Lux 3 and 1 at the second. Switch on board with the attacking squad as always. Carnage is going to be the man who we switch on board with at the start. Looks like he's going to be heading towards A. It's going to be a 2 2 split. On board with Carnage. And once again, I think he's going to cause problems over this A side. But Epsilon, look at that rush. They are in and around B before, before 
Vitality can even blink, but you know, Jared's gonna go down to get target. That's not gonna help things. And Carnage, there you go, taking out Flux. This could be a lead for Vitality. The two rushers did absolutely nothing for Epsilon. That they didn't indeed, and this is gonna play so essential if they can take an attacking round here. Carnage, I love staying on board with this guy because he's just causing absolute havoc. Somebody's gonna be coming. Oh, he just wishes away at the last second. Such unfortunate timing. we we'll switch on board with the Gataga, the French monster, just having a look here, defending this B-bomb site as the bomb has so gone down. They have, to, they have to just sit back, sit in corners and watch. Blue's gonna take out Tommy, and there's another gunfight going on in the center of the map. Blue coming in with a two-piece. That's gonna be two, one, two. Vitality, vitality and the ascendancy here. They're looking like the team that's going to do it. Yep, they are indeed. We will have to see, though. Anything can happen. This is Call of Duty Esports. You can never predict it until that last final scoreboard comes up against two of the top teams like this. Me and Rail did predict that Vitality were going to be one of the top three. Well, top four squads technically is, of course, three and four do not play against each other. Um, but, you know, still, they could place top two here if they manage to keep this up. Well, on board with Flux, Epsilon need to do something. They need to do something quickly. Lost it. An attack and a defense. So they need to answer back on board with Jed. Of course, the game attack is actually to hurt. Oh, trust me, it is Jed. One and two currently. Remington is out. Nobody down for either team yet. A bit of a slow start compared to the other rounds. Have a look, there's a sneaky beaver going around the bat. That is going to be broken. We won't switch on board with him for a second, but we will keep him highlighted. Actually, I'm going to jump on board with him just because I want to see how he's going to make this push. I know we usually stick on board with the attacking team, but he is really being sneaky around the back here. And actually, Flux does go down there. Blue manages to go down as well, so that's actually Jerd picking up the first kill. But broken, he does go down. Doesn't quite work for him. We'll switch back on board with Jerd. He's going to be able to get the plant. Carnage, last one left alive in a one versus three. They have no idea. Well, I'm sure they do, but that's such an important kill. Carnage is in a great position. Going to get taken down, but Tommy saved them there because I think, you know, Broken comes around the back of them there. He's going to pick up at least a kill. Yeah. At least. So important play by Tommy. That essentially won them the round. There was 3v1 Carnage. was never really going to get anywhere near that with Swanee and Jerd there. So that's now 2-2. Two, two. I, I literally have no idea what's going to I cannot happen. call this. <laughs> and of course, both teams managing on the first time of asking, taking defensive rounds, and then both teams trading and taking attacking rounds. So sorry, we will switch on board with the attacking team. Gataga is going to be three and two at the second. We'll see if he's going to be able to get any early picks here, which is going to be so important if he does. But Blue actually is able to do that, taking out Jerd. It's a three versus four. He's just checking around the bomb site there. There is actually someone oh, there. Blue. Blue with another one. I can't imagine he's going to pick up another. He just gets taken out by Tommy there eventually. Carnage in a great position over towards A again. Broken. Oh, look how close he kill. is. He's so, so close. He just wants to drive faster and kill. He's going to go down. That's going to be Swanee. Going to take one. Broken has no idea where he is. That's such good work by Swanee. Is he going to get away from the shotgun though? I don't think he's going to get taken down by somebody else on the Vitality team. It was Carnage. Tommy. Oh. Tommy shouldn't have fired those shots there. Bit of a twitchy finger on this guy, usually so, so consistent. It's because his reactions are too destroyed. quick, if anything. Yeah, I mean, exactly that. 0.2 second reaction time, as Rel decided to call it. Yeah, I don't know why that came out. No, I don't do know I. if he's just spewed that Love out. Rel, you know? but interesting. We'll have to find out about that. But anyway, still, Tommy in a one versus two. Oh, Make that a one versus one. Broken versus Tommy. Let's see if he's going to be able to clutch this. He's got a one versus two clutch in the last search and destroy, but he's got to head all the way over to A if he wants to do it. It is such a hard one to defuse. There's so many places they can sit. I, they have to just either run into each other or they're not gonna, he's not going to be able to do it. Broken is miles away. This could go either way here. Two, 25 seconds remaining. Let's see what Tommy can do to try and win this round for Epsilon. What Broken can do and try and defend the bomb. They're going to run into each other down the outside. Ali, Tommy, you spotted him. Going for the kill. Oh, oh Tommy! Tommy with the headshot. And that's the sort of thing he can do to win games for Epsilon. Unbelievable. It might look a simple headshot, but in that situation, Wow, three, two, Epsilon. I jumped out of my chair there, exactly what you would expect from Tommy. Second one versus two that this man has been able to get in this series. Absolutely brilliant shot from him. We said how he had a bit of a twitchy finger. Very quick reaction time, but it worked completely in his favor there. So we are going to have to stay on board with him now as we do see him start the attacking round. Three, two in favor of Epsilon. That could play absolutely huge. Here's the bit. Yeah. Great decision from him to be able to do this. Let's see if he's going to be able to pick up any kills on a five street right now. He is able to pick up that first kill. Is he on top of oh, He just away. back away. Yeah, he needed to get away there. Vitality got to go with the sniper rifle. Oh, he's going to get taken out. So there you go. Tommy does actually go down to blue. And now they're going to be attracted to the side that they are at B. But now I think, you know, Epsilon needs to think, right, okay, we need to sort of think about getting this down now before Vitality can sort of get themselves over here. But yeah, Jet's going to pick up that kill. Nice lean out there onto Kataga. It's now three versus three with so many boys just directly above them. 
in the apartments. I think a kill may potentially go down. He might just about get it down. Now Vitality Blade is going to cause some problems. Oh. There you go. That's going to be Carnage. Flux does take out Broken. Oh. Flux in a great position. Carnage is going to absolutely destroy him. And Swanee has work to do here. Yep, he does indeed. Using the Remington, is he going to be able to spot this player? Great position, Playing you know. so well, yeah, as you say. Great position for him. He has just spotted the player there, so he's going to pre-aim towards it. Swanee. He needs to get in some sort of cover, though. If, if that guy pops up top. Oh, oh, just backs away from that. Oh, he's going to be able to pick up one. Oh, he gets the two Swanee. as well. Two, one versus two clutches in a row for Epsilon. Two rounds away. Look at them. This is just... Wow, turn. I'm on the edge of my seat. Wow, man. You know, every single time, that's the edge we're talking about from Epsilon. Coming up with two 1v2 clutches, that's the sort of row. thing that wins you games. Yeah. At the moment, if you look at the kills, it's very even, but the rounds is what matters. Epsilon in the lead by 4-2. to two. Wow. What a series this has been so far, Chewie. Let's see what Blue can do, because he had a great round with that sniper a couple of rounds ago. Is he going to get the pick? No, oh, that's unlucky. That's oh, yeah. timing for your oh, his teammate covering the carnage does take out flux at 4v3 in favor of vitality. Would you, would you say in favor though? Because Epsilon seem to do better when they have to the clutch. Yeah, well, it seems so in the last two rounds, especially, but 4 2 it is. So, still a couple of rounds to play with here for Epsilon, although I'm sure they're going to be wanting to shut this one out as soon as possible. Top fragger for Vitality is the man on your screen, which is, of course, Carnage. 7 and 5 at the second. He is going to get taken down, though, so he will switch over to Blue. See what work he can do. Carnage getting taken out by Judd. He's going to meet a player oh. there. Does get the kill there. Buzz kill onto Swanee, taking him out with a headshot. 2 versus 2. Blue and Gataga versus. Jerd and Tommy. Yeah, if you want anybody to try and clutch things, Jerd and Tommy is really going to be the combination you want. Good target. They're so far apart. Yeah, they are. They're really far apart. But, you know, I think they're not too sure where he is in the moment. I think now that they've had a look around both one sites, they'll sort of make a decision. Tommy with a shot across the map onto blue. Good target on for the 1v2. Yeah, we'll see if he's going to be able to do it. We've seen two one versus twos in favor of Epsilon if in a row. If he bomb down, is he can down. Yeah, I mean, he's got 16 seconds to play with here. Looks like he may be able to do that. He's going to be starting to rush down these stairs, though. Let's see what he's going to do. Pulling out his sniper rifle is going to try and go for it. Somebody's going to be rushing forward, though. Are they going to be able to spot him through the bomb site? Shot's going down. He does get taken out. That is going to be Jerd. Six and four for that man with two plants to his name as well. He's on a three streak. Epsilon coming in so huge, three rounds in a row. And if they choke this now, that is going to go down as history as one of the biggest comebacks ever seen in Call of Duty, I uh, believe. I, I've seen ridiculous comebacks, but, you know, I think at the minute I can't see them losing it from this position. We did think Vitality are the best, better S&D team. The clutch moments, though, the single moments that Epsilon have had have really drove them on here. 5-2 now, an attack to potentially win the round. What is that from Vitality? Very, very aggressive. First blood goes to Epsilon and Tommy. Jade in a bad position. Yeah, Flux is going to pick up the second kill as well. Epsilon in the ascendancy now. Here we go with Jade. Is he going to go for the bomb plant? It does seem as if Vitaly are all over them, though. The last two players in and around that. Somebody around the back. Somebody coming around the back there. Who's that going to be? Can he check the bomb? Oh! With a kill. Gataga gets the kill. It's a one versus three for Gataga. The bomb is down. Okay, Gataga one versus three to keep his team in the tournament. Are Epsilon going to be able to take oh, it? Yes, they are. Epsilon take it. Wow. Whoa, man. That was very, very close. Great work by Epsilon. No, there's two clutch rounds really coming in for them there. Swanee with that cover on the bomb. That was very important kill in that round there. 6-2. It ends in the end. 3-2 overall in maps. My heart is absolutely I racing. I, I cannot describe what these other guys are going to be like going through the booths. But guys, what a series. Let's just quickly recap it. Epsilon took the first map. Vitality taking the second. Another trade. Epsilon taking the third. So dominant on Blitz. Mm -hmm. Fourth map going in favor of Vitality. And then finally, Epsilon taking the fifth map. They are going to be progressing through to the finals, which means that Epsilon are one match away from crowning themselves as European, championships, uh, European Championship winners also bagging themselves 15,000 euros and getting that all crucial seeding point as well. And the question is, who are they going to meet up with? I mean, we'll leave that to the analysts to decide. Julia, what did you think of that game? Wow, that was quite ridiculous. We've all been kind of like watching that go back and forwards. Um, right, let's start at the very beginning. We have domination on Ortain. Uh, Zach, let's give us your read. Yeah, um, Swanee played Unreal. Um, Tommy, I'm going to say it's the Tommy factor. Um, he played. Guys are loving him right now. It's just the, the, the buzzword for the show. He is basically the best all rounder in Europe. I mean, I he, he can actually. Personally, my opinion, he can compete in the upper echelons in the US. Yeah, I would say uh, so, Absolutely, yeah. comfortably. Um, and, yeah, he, it's a pleasure to watch. And Epson was um, 
really good to watch. And I know Broken had a really a good stint. You know, he got one of the most the best free pieces I've seen in a long while, um, whilst on low health. But yeah. good win by um, Epsilon in the first game. Yeah, I mean, I think the first map was probably the only map that Tommy wasn't absolutely the standout player in. Um, the first map, Broken actually started. I think it was 17 and two, or something mm. like that, right at the start. I mean, he was heavily, heavily carrying his team. You can see, you can see Street Kiri just picking up kill after kill after kill. Um, and it's yeah. it's so strange to see a player go so heavily off and the mm. team lose. I mean, it's me and Josh have been saying the whole day today. Normally, when a player goes re really that yeah. that much off, <laughs> yeah. it's hard to lose. Yeah, it's hard to lose. Right? managed to lose it. <laughs> um, I don't know if they managed to lose it or Epsilon were just really consistently slain, picking up points, and that's how they won it. One thing I have noticed about Epsilon, it doesn't really matter how many kills they're picking up, they always seem to manage to get a flag. Like Even if they're being dominated, they're hard to getting any kills, they're trapped in, they always seem to manage to somehow to get out to the enemy flag or neutralise it just so they get out. And like, as you said, like it was really close. There was like a six points different in the first half. So yeah. it pops to Epsilon for sticking to it. Um, let's move on to S&D Warhawk. Um, what were you thinking with this one? Um, I was actually... It was a, a really intense game mode. Um, there was one point in particular, I remember Gotaga, um, unfortunately choking that that, that bomb yeah. he could have got a really easy clutch he made it hard for himself um, he was sitting in, in smoke which was good play you know uh, Epsilon smoked it to try and plant it so he thought he'll push forward um, and, and try and get the fuse he started shooting but then suddenly turned away yeah. and then it made it extremely hard for him for himself and yeah, you know um, oh, and Tommy got a really beast 1v2 here such good play composure uh, under such pressure it was yeah, yeah really I mean this is this, <clears throat> this is really the first map of like, the Tommy show to be honest Um he goes 14 and 8 overall in this map oh, this. and he's just consistently <laughs> flanking behind the, the team picking up one two kills every single time um, we've said before Zach he's, he's a player that's got decision making composure ability he's got that slaying power he's an all rounder he's got everything in his game to be honest um, so it's hitting his stride then you reckon in that yeah. second one I mean it's again that was, that was an our strange one to have such an outstanding performance with Tommy and for Vitality to win the map um, and I know it was 6-5 they won it it was really really close at the end but again it was another one where one player went off but the team's not won it I think it's just the nature of this game really like that happening because you can dominate a team for a minute and then like and still not get a free cap and then all it takes is for them to break out and have that one time where they free cap for 30 seconds and basically that whole minute or two you dominated them is just disregarded so I think it's just the way the game works but going back to the S&D like it was really close back and forth 6-5 it ended to Vitality yeah. it was like there were so many times where Epson got first bullied and they still won the round that's one thing I've noticed three of them they're actually like really good at doing so props to them and then next up we had Blitz Freight. Um, what was your take on that? That's probably the highest score in Blitz Freight yeah. I've seen in uh, on this game thus far. I mean, fair enough, it's so aggressive. It's really aggressive game type and map. But then it just goes to show that the the, the capabilities of these top top teams in in, in Europe. I mean. They're just so aggressive, you know. It's perfect match uh, maps for um, the the, the uh, SMGs to push up. You know, we've seen time after time that on freight, the teams will make the other teams spawn back red, and you know Tommy was moving backwards and forwards, and he was cap capping flags, and Swanee even was so far up, and he and as a, as a AR player that holds um, the majority of the time, he had a, a, a fair few caps to his name. He put in a good shift himself, and it was such a high scoring game. Yeah, I mean, me and Josh have kind of been speaking about Freight Blitz um, all event, and we, we both kind of agree it's just one of these maps that defending just isn't something you do on it, really. You just mm -hmm. constantly push forward. Um, we've seen Epsilon took the right way to play. They went four SMGs. You actually seen Swanee take an SMG. I've got his stats run down. He went 12, he went 12 and 9 with four caps. So he knows how to use that gun as well. Um, they played it absolutely perfectly. Constant aggression, constant pressure. Vitality just didn't know what hit them. Yeah. Yeah, going to that as well, like, I think Vitality kind of messed up towards the start because, as we just said, it's not a defending map. Like, you should never really be rotating back, and Vitality kept on trying to fight back for their own base, and they was losing their gunfights. And even if they did win them gunfights, this is the way like, it works. You win them gunfights, you get control of your own base. You're never going to kill all four at the exact same time, so you're always looking for one guy. And then by the time you find that guy, the other team has spawned again, and they push straight back up to your base. So it's best to just keep constantly pushing and just disregard your own blitz and just hope that you can catch them at spawn when you go into the when they've just capped your blitz. Okay. And then uh, domination on Sovereign. Uh, that was intense. I mean, it's what I, I personally believe that it's one of Epsilon's strongest maps. I mean, I, I've gone through things with Tommy and, and Flux, and I've sat in a lobby with them whilst they're practicing it, and I've seen some spots that 
I, it, honestly, I've not ever seen before, and they've just yeah. thought of them and, and made spots. And even I saw Jerd hanging on the edge of B, and I, I didn't know you could do that. Um, I thought that that's one of their strongest maps and vitality to you know come back and and, and win. Um, by a, 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 a decent margin as well on the second side showed lots of composure especially against the team that I think is is up there as their strongest map yeah I mean I think that Vitality just really showed that you play that map as a unit um, you play for the team Diablo again done the same trick as he done last game where he jumped on C flag neutralised it ran away picked up a two piece and jumped on and capped it um, to flip the spawns back out distract the team and obviously cap an extra flag he obviously likes to do that um, Vitaly just played it completely as a team as a unit and that's, that's why they won yeah, can't agree more. Like going into the first half, uh, Epson actually had like a six or seven point lead as well, and so for the Vitality to stay composed after the just like even though if they lose his side, it's game over. They're going home, like to stay composed and then still bring it back and manage to win was props to them. Yeah, pretty. And then, of course, the last spectacular one, which was at S&D Octane. And uh, we, we were watching it here, and uh, like when he's planting the ball, I, I couldn't even see what was going on yeah. there. Like, that was just a crazy, crazy shot. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> we, were, we were just sitting watching it, and um, I said to Zach, Tommy's Mel's a bit, I don't think you'll be able to do this. And he just made his way all over the map, and he went, oh, Broken's a really good spot. And I heard the commentator say, <laughs> Broken's on the side of the map, he'll never get him. And Tommy, just being the player he is, just... <laughs> jumped to the side, hit him in the head. I think this is it here, you'll see. He's, 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 he's rotating all the way around the, the opposite side, broken his miles away from him. Tommy, I think, just catches a little glimpse of him here, sees where he is, and it's just, it's just an outrageous shot, to be honest. Um, and right there, that was really a turning point. Um, after that, Vitality never won another round. Um, Epsilon on to steamroll it and, and win the rest of it straight. So I'll tell you what, Epsilon, you know, we're lucky not to concede two rounds as well. I mean, there were points where you, you saw uh, Vitality, there was back-to-back -back clutches that, that round, and then there was a clutch from Swanee afterwards. And it, it, Josh will tell you, it's so frustrating to watch because they were at such an advantage. You know, if they would have played it just a little bit more smart, and then they would have won those two rounds. Uh, Josh, I know you were quite frustrated watching it yourself. Yeah, like like you said, there was two certain rounds where Vitaly had like such a big opportunity to take the round, and like I think they would have went four two up themselves. Like there was one round where I think it was Tommy in the one versus two, and Vitaly literally were on the opposite side of the maps. One guy was planting a bomb, while the other guy was at B by the bus, and like I'm not sure what was the, what the thinking behind that was, and it's just pretty frustrating to watch, as you said, like. It, they could have easily taken that. That was like, such a close game. And like, just a few to split decision making could have changed the whole thing. Yeah, it was a pretty spectacular semi final. Obviously, we've got the next one coming up next. Um, obviously, we want to be telling you guys that in our final, we have the legend that is Hastro, who's going to be commentating, which is very exciting. He's come all the way over just for the final. So, obviously, we already know that Epsilon are going to be in it. Now we need to find out who's going to be in the final with them. So, we've got uh, Tech and we've got TCM. You're basically out because you're yeah, rubbish. You're We're not even going to bother you're asking right. you questions anymore. No, we will. I'm just kidding. Who do you think is going to win in this next semi final? I'm going to go for uh, TCM, the okay. strong team. I know. I, I just say I had a fair shout with Vitality there. I'm just yeah, pretty... yeah, yeah, but you still technically <laughs> yeah. lost, and that's all that counts. I'm a gracious loser. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's one point between me and Josh, so I, I, I need to go the opposite way from he's, he's going to go. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go tech, and I assume he's going to go TCM. Yeah, got to give it to TCM. I'm not going to repeat what I said, but you know, everyone knows they're like, one of the best teams in Europe at the minute. They're so tight. I, I just, I mean, like, I want, I, part of me sort of wants Tech to go through, but then, like, I just, I can't see any holes sort of in what TCM are doing at the moment. So I guess we're going to go to a commercial now, and then we'll be back with the next semi final of this European COD Championships.